Beaufort County EMS will get new vehicles and new staff. Beaufort County gears up for the third annual locomotion event. And a new tax collection program will be implemented. We'll bring you all the details. All that and much more. Keep watching Beaufort. Your news starts now. Thanks for joining us for the Beaufort News, I'm Jessa Jeremiah and here are your local headlines. As some of the ambulances begin to age past their prime, Beaufort County Emergency Medical Services will soon be replacing them. Furthermore, County Council just approved the purchase of two additional ambulances that will be purchased later this year. The Council also approved the hiring of more staff to help with these new vehicles. The ambulances are set to be put into service in the coming weeks. The 12-week training schedule is just around the corner beginning on July 8th for the third annual Locomotion event. This three-day, 30-mile run walk is to raise money and awareness for breast cancer. It combines three different 10-mile courses for participants to walk or run through different parts of the Low Country. This year's event takes place from September 26th through September 29th. Visit, visit dothelocomotion.org for course maps and to register. Beaufort County Parks and Leisure Services has announced that they will be offering a variety of sporting options for local youth this fall. Sports will include flag football, tackle football, cheerleading, baseball, and soccer. After school registration for PALS will begin July 1st and will be open until all centers are full. For additional information, you can call 843-255-6680. A decision has been made not to move fifth graders back to Ladies Island Elementary School for the upcoming school year. The board may, however, decide to restore fifth grade classes in all of its elementary schools for the following year. The decision comes after a vote by the Beaufort County School Board. Currently, St. Helena, Ladies Island, and Coosa Elementary Schools do not have a fifth grade class. Employees and consumers at Beaufort County's Disabilities and Special Needs Department got to enjoy the first day of summer with several fun activities. Family members were able to participate in the summer activities held at the DSN department, which included chair volleyball, exercising, and a best sunglasses contest. Once a quarter, DSN invites family members and caregivers to the center to see what their loved ones have been working on. This day is just one example of how DSN is dedicated to empowering the individuals they serve to reach their maximum potential. A new chair of Beaufort Jasper Water and Sewer Authority's Board of Directors was elected at June's 27th meeting. David Lott replaces Brandy Gray, who served as the board chair for the past three and a half years and whose board term runs through 2015. The staff looks forward to David's leadership and to working with the board to continuing to provide vital water and wastewater services to their customers. Lott represents the City of Beaufort on the board and has served BJWSA since 2011. Beaufort County Council authorized the purchase recently of 34 acres of land in the Burton area. The acquisition through the Rural and Critical Land Program advances a partnership with the Marine Corps Air Station to pre preserve lands that act as a buffer for the installation. The property is adjacent to other protected lands and expands the conservation focus area the properties are owned by members of the Pulaski family who use the land for cattle farming. The cost of the land is valued at $206,000. In an effort to collect delinquent taxes more efficiently, the Beaufort County Treasurer's Office will be implementing a new tax collection program this fall. The program is in alignment with the Set-Off Debt Collection Act, which enables the garnishment of South Carolina state income tax refunds. The program may be expanded in the future, but the Treasurer's Office will begin with delinquent mobile homes. Affected taxpayers will be notified by mail in July. And here's what's happening around the state. A Myrtle Beach Resort is working to reopen one of its three towers after a fire broke out recently. The fire that began in the electrical room of a Crown Reef forced guests to evacuate the 180-room tower and move to nearby hotels. Thursday's fire struck just as the resort heads into the July 4th holiday period, but the hotel hopes to reopen as early as next week. If you'd like additional information on these headlines, you can reference the media sources you see listed on your screen. Also, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. After the break, we bring you a story on the Beaufort Regional Chamber and their many successes over the past year. And Island News will join us to tell us what's hot off the press, so stick around.
Low Country Real Estate is located in historic downtown Beaufort, home to one of the most attractive real estate markets in America. We've been providing high quality service to our community for the past 24 years. Whether you're interested in buying or selling residential, resort, or commercial investment property, our professional sales staff can help you with your real estate needs. Please visit LowCountryRealEstate.com for details on all available properties in Beaufort and come see how the Low Country becomes you. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. I have with me Wendy Politzer, who joins us from Island News, bringing us our hot off the press report. Welcome, Wendy. So I want to talk to you first about EcoDuel that's coming to Beaufort, and I know everyone is so excited about the opportunities that this brings to us. So give us more information about Project Robot and EcoDuel as in general. You're right. The, the buzz is still going on about EcoDuel. It's the company that provides dual fuel conversion systems for heavy-duty class eight trucks, and it'll locate its new manufacturing facility at the Beaufort Commerce Park. And recently, the company announced its new president and CEO, Mike Donahue. Mike is the former vice president of Chrysler and former executive VP at Tesla, which is the company that was responsible for introducing the first highway capable electric car, the Tesla Roadster. He is also uh, the CEO, the former CEO of Bright Automotive, which designed and produced a plug in hybrid electric car. So he is very familiar with. Um, with, with vehicle technology and, and, and this new dual fuel conversion system. Okay, very interesting. And I know this means a lot for Beaufort, but talk to us a little bit about what this exactly is gonna bring. Jobs, 307 of them to Beaufort, which is very exciting. And I think this is the kickoff company that the Commerce Park needed um, to spur more innovative technology uh, businesses to the Commerce Park. So Beaufort is very excited about that. Absolutely, we look forward to that. Now, switching gears a little bit, I know there's a lot of Little League baseball news in the area, so give us some info about youth baseball in Beaufort, if you would. We had um, some exciting wins last week. We had the seven and eight-year-old boys and the nine and 10-year-old boys win some major games, and they're gonna go to some state championships. Congratulations to the Beaufort East District 8 Dixie Youth AA Machine Pitch Champions. The seven and eight-year-olds are gonna to travel to Georgetown and represent Beaufort County for the state championship this Saturday, July 6th. And their older brothers, the nine and 10-year-olds, Beaufort East's Dixie Youth Baseball minor, Minors will also represent Beaufort. Now, if you have any other exciting news about Little League or about your, your teams and, and little athletes, please email your photos and game wins to theislandnews at gmail.com. All right, exciting stuff. We look forward to that and everything that EcoDuel is going to bring to Beaufort as well. So thanks for that story. Thank you, Wendy Politzer with Island News for joining us today for our hot off the press report. Thanks, Jessa, for having me. The Beaufort Regional Chamber of Commerce had many successes honoring outstanding businesses, individuals, and organizations over the past year. Jamie Daly Vergara has that story for our business report. The Beaufort Regional Chamber of Commerce rolled out the plum carpet for guests at the 2013 Civitas Awards and annual meeting. South Carolina is primed and ready for some big economic development announcements. We're number eight in the country on this job announcement chart and we want to see some wins here in Beaufort. Stephen and I are committed to working hard to make those happen here. In 2011, uh, the Department of Commerce helped create over 20,000 jobs with $5.1 billion, billion with a B, mm -hmm. in capital investments. And uh, it's our job and uh, our goal to get some of that down here in Beaufort County, like the EcoDuel announcement that we had last week. There are so many cool things happening. We've got an Economic Development Committee. We're partnering with more organizations than ever before, working toward doing some really great things in the, in the community. Uh, the chamber is just getting started. We also support the governor's budget, where she committed millions of dollars to the South Carolina Department of Commerce's closing fund. And what we really want to see is her down here breaking ground in Beaufort. Hi, I'm Nikki Haley, and I am so sorry I can't be with you at the Beaufort County Chamber of Commerce's annual dinner, but I hear that y'all are going to be recognizing some real rock stars in our state, and I want to thank all of you for the involvement you have in your community and the involvement you have in the state. Everybody should be a member of the Chamber of Commerce because everybody in our region has economic interest, whether it's tourism, whether it's military, whether it's small business advocacy, whether it's economic development, 
everybody stands to benefit from the work that we do at the Chamber of Commerce. Economic development, economic interest raises all ships, whether it's the nonprofit community, the school district, it puts food on our tables. So everybody, whether you're an individual, a small business, or a, a large government organization, you should be a member of this Chamber of Commerce. Anybody that does business in the Beaufort region or wants to do business in the Beaufort region should be a member of our Chamber of Commerce. Throughout the evening, the Chamber celebrated their successes throughout the year and honored and recognized outstanding businesses, individuals, and organizations who help make this community a better place to live and work. The South Carolina uh, Film Bill uh, past as, as most people know by now and we're already getting a lot of inquiries about Beaufort and what Beaufort has to offer and it's just a matter of time before they'll, they'll be here. One of the highlights of the evening was the Lifetime of Leadership Award where Richard Gray Sr., the owner and founder of Grayco, was honored for his service in the community. We were really proud tonight, Malcolm and I, to be sponsors of the Lifetime of Leadership. We think it's a marvelous way to honor those people in our community. For the Beaufort Business Report, I'm Jamie Daly Vergara. Coming up, we have the founder of Beaufort's newest nonprofit here to tell us why they're making news. And good news for Beaufort's production students. We'll have that story after the break. Allison Ramsey Architects believes that good design is a result of a collaborative effort between the architect, the builder, and most importantly, the client. The low country lifestyle incorporates all aspects of the home, and good design reflects the character of a family. No longer items of luxury, good design is standard. Let us help you craft a home built with everyday living in mind. Allison Ramsey Architects, creating sustainable, timeless design. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. Joining us now is Justine Kroll, who is the founder and president of Operation Saving Jake, which is Beaufort's newest founded nonprofit. So, such a great story, Justine. First of all, talk to us about Operation Saving Jake and what your organization is all about. Um, we were founded in October, and we aim to rescue shelter dogs and train them to become service canines for veterans suffering with PTSD and mobility limitation. And give us just a quick background on who Jake is. Um, Jake was my best friend since I was seven years old. Um, he joined the Air Force, was doing special operations. He was deployed all the time. Um, during his final deployment, he ended up losing his left leg and just suffered from severe, severe PTSD. So um, he passed away actually in October of 2012. And after he passed, we decided to uh, found this nonprofit in hopes to help other veterans that are in similar situations that he was in. And that's such a moving story. Now, talk to us a little bit about your process for how veterans are chosen for your program. So tell us about that, if you would. Uh, they, they can contact us, and then we just need to make sure that they have the proper documentation saying that they do they are disabled they do have PTSD um, or a mobility limitation because there's a lot of people out there who just want to make their pets into service dogs so they can bring them everywhere so we really need to make sure that um, you know they, they do qualify for this program and what about dogs how are the dogs chosen for your program they need to be rescued from a shelter. Um, we work a lot with Jasper Animal Rescue Mission in Ridgeland, but you know we also look elsewhere. Um, they need to go through an extensive temperament test because you just can't take any dog and expect it to become a suitable service dog. So after the extensive um, testing, temperament testing, they then enter into um, their training, they go through 18 weeks of basic obedience training, they get canine good citizenship certified, then we actually take them to get therapy dog tested, then if they can pass those two, they enter into their uh, service training program. Okay, well, what a great organization and such a good story. Tell us really quick how we can contact you. Uh, we have a website, it's savingjake.org. You can also find us on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Operation Saving Jake. We have a office phone, which is 843-808-JAKE5253. All right, such a great story and what a great organization. Thank you so much for your report. Thank you.
Joining us now is Emily Folk, who joins us from the film and TV production class with TCL. Now, Emily, we've got some questions about this exciting new course coming up, but first tell us just a little bit about what you do. Uh, sure. Um, I'm a freelance producer. Um, I've worked on productions from anyone with, uh, from National Geographic to American Movie Classics to NBC News to Fox News. Um, I really had quite quite a uh, quite a bit of experience in the film and television world and now live in the Beaufort area. So an extensive background in this field. Now I know Making News is this exciting course that's offered soon, so talk to us about that. Sure. The class starts um, July 18th and it runs for five I'm sorry, four Thursdays in a row. It's from 5.45 to 7 p.m. Um, and it's with TCL's Continuing Education Department. Um, the class itself will teach those that sign up for it everything that they would want to know about the film and television industry. Um, everything from reality television to documentary television to independent film to breaking news. Um, and it really is designed to teach those that don't know what they would be good at in the film and television world. Um, it will talk about, it will teach people about, you know, industry lingo and who's who on the set and um, sort of, sort of get people to figure out what they might be good at in film and television. All right, Emily, this sounds like such a great class. So tell us real quick, real quick, who should take this course, how do we register, and who do we contact if we have more questions? Sure, absolutely. Um, anyone that's interested in the course can call TCL's Continuing Education Department. That number is 843-525-8205. The class runs for four Thursdays in a row starting July 18th. It'll be from 5.45 to 7 p.m. and anyone from High school seniors to, I would say, late 20s, early 30s um, can sign up for the class. Uh, anyone that, is, that has very little experience in the film and television industry can sign up. All right, so a great opportunity for students interested in production. Thank you so much for joining us from TCL. We appreciate your report. Absolutely, thank you so much. When we return, we'll go on location to find out what's new in Beaufort Entertainment. And we have Councilman Joe Lee with our Port Royal Report. Is it time to purchase for the one-of-a-kind person in your life? Over 60 years of service distinguishes Modern Jewelers as one of South Carolina's preeminent jewelry stores. We're proud to have been voted Beaufort's number one jewelry store 10 years in a row. Come visit us at 807 Bay Street. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. Joining us now is Councilman Joe Lee, who brings us our Port Royal Report. Now, Joe, we're starting to get really excited about the 4th of July festivities, so talk to us about this. Give us an update. Well, thank you, Jess. We're real pleased. Uh, everything's coming together quite well. Uh, recent reports show the weather's going to be just great. Uh, the Marine Band is practicing it uh, as much as they can, and they're ready to go. Their show will be at 7.30. Um, this, of course, is on July the 4th at the Sands in Port Royal. Uh, you just uh, come down Paris Avenue and park where you can and come on in. We do not uh, allow coolers, but what we do suggest you bring is your uh, favorite low country bag chair uh, and your uh, best shoes for walking because you will do some walking. Uh, the show, as I say, at 730 and then fireworks at dusk. Uh, everything really starts at five and there are plenty of things for adults and for children. So uh, come on and make a day of it, uh, and we look forward to seeing you. All right, well, we look forward to it, Joe. Now to switch gears on you a little bit, I know there's a one-time change for your upcoming town council meeting. Tell us about this. Yes, Jesse, we don't do this very often, and when we do, uh, we, we need to tell everybody about it because uh, uh, we don't want any, um, anybody to get confused. But this month, in July, we're gonna only have one council meeting Normally we have a workshop on the first Wednesday of the month where we're not in session and we discuss our next 
uh, week's agenda. This year, uh, this uh, Wednesday the 3rd will be the only meeting we have, and we will be in session. Uh, our session start at 6.30 at Town Hall, and uh, of course the public is welcome, so uh, please come in. Uh, the, the, we will not have a meeting on the 10th. All right, Joe. Well, real quick, I know we've talked about this before, but give us a quick update on the skateboard park that I know is down for some repairs. Well, Jessa, yeah, we're really sorry that uh, at the end of the school here, all of a sudden the children wanted to come and skateboard and we had to shut it down for a few days to make some repairs. It's back up now, uh, but I do want to say uh, the repairs were, the ca were caused by vandalism and uh, if the skateboarders themselves will step up and, uh, and tell people not to tear up their skateboard park, we won't have to shut it down. And we'd hate to do that, especially at the end of school. All right, Joe. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but thank you for the update. Thank you for your report. That's Councilman Joe Lee for our Port Royal report. Thank you, Jessa. Now we go on location to see what's new at USCB and the Met Opera Presents Carmen. That's in our Out and About report. All right, thanks a lot. Let's start with the movies. Monday, July 8th is movie night at USCB Center for the Arts, your local headquarters for the best in international indie film, and this time they're featuring Tiger Eyes. It's directed by Lawrence Bloom. It follows a 17-year-old girl who sets out on a journey from heartbreak and confusion to transformation as she discovers love and life after tragedy. Tiger Eyes marks the first major motion picture adaptation from the uh, work of iconic young adult author Judy Bloom. Her books have sold 82 million copies worldwide. Now, the movie starts at 7 p.m., Tickets are $7 for adults, $6 for seniors, and $5 for students. You can call the box office to reserve your seats at 843-521-4145 or purchase the day of performance. Also at USCB, the Met Opera Summer Series features Robert Ears' hit production of Carmen. It stars El Negaran as the seductive gypsy of the title opposite Roberto Aliana as the obsessed Don Jose. The director says Carmen is, quote, about sex, violence, and racism, and its corollary, freedom. It's one of the inalienably great works of art. It's sexy in every sense, and I think it should be shocking, unquote. That ought to sell some tickets. Come find out just how shocking on Wednesday, July 10th at 1 p.m. General admission is $15. For more information, once again, call the USCB box office. That number is 843-521-4145. We'll hear it again in a moment. Hang on, there's even more going on at USCB, having just wrapped at Summer Theater Group for Younger Kids. The Center for the Arts is looking forward to a new camp for ages 12 to 15. It's called Theatrix, running July 29th through August 9th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Campers will be working toward a public performance of The Susification of Romeo and Juliet for Friday, August 9th at 7 p.m. That, as you might expect, is a whimsical reinvention of Shakespeare's tragic love story, complete with rhymed couplets, creative wordplay, and fantastical machines, similar to something that Dr. Seuss might have come up with if he'd had his way with Shakespeare's script himself. The camp fee is $275 to register. Call the USCB Center for the Arts once again at 843-521-4145 and stay up on what's local with a free copy of Low Country Weekly on the streets or click on lcweekly.com for more information. And that is what's out and about. Back to you. Thank you for another great out and about report and thank you for watching. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. Please join us next time for your Beaufort News.